Hello and welcome to a guide to Big Finish, where I help both newcomers and veterans of the aforementioned audio company alike navigate the entourage of stories which can look rather intimidating to some fans. Today I'm focusing on the audios that include the second Doctor. Just as a disclaimer, I have not heard every Troughton audio, but I've heard most of them, and today we'll only be discussing the good ones and the important ones. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first batch of audios we will be discussing today is the Companion Chronicles, starting with The Glorious Revolution. The Glorious Revolution is not only a gripping pure historical in its own right, but it does what any good Companion Chronicle does best and makes it personal. The whole reason that there was a Jacobite Rebellion, of which Jimmy was a part in in the Highlanders, was because of the overthrow of King James II in what was dubbed the Glorious Revolution. Hence, when the crew land in that period, Jamie is very much at odds with the Doctor, being that he wants to change history for the sake of his people, leading to some really potent drama between him and the Doctor, which explores the rarely seen more negative side of their relationship. It's also very sad to see Jamie let down by his and his people's hero in the end. This is what the Companion Chronicles do best, infatuating personal drama. I highly recommend it. The Memory Cheat is about an ongoing arc in Zoe's Companion Chronicles about trouble she gets into back in her own time and trying to remember her time with the Doctor. It's fine to start here though and move on to second chances as they're the two worth listening to in my opinion. Anyhow, this story is a historical set soon after the October Revolution in Russian controlled Uzbekistan in a provincial area where the new Bolshevik government is only just starting to have influence. While there's a decent sci-fi plot behind this story, where it really scores, as with most Companion Chronicles, is making it quite personal to Zoe, and making it a really gripping atmosphere. It's difficult to pin down quite why this one is so good, as on paper it sounds fairly standard, but somehow stellar writing, direction and performances make it stand out a lot, not to mention it's a joy to listen to. Look out for the twist at the end, you won't see it coming. I always find stories told out of order quite fun, but with the Jigsaw War there's a real purpose to it, as it's not just out of order for the audience, it's also out of order for Jamie, who is trying to work out which way round things go, as it's the only way to escape. Again, this is one which really gets its claws into Jamie's mind, and while maybe not as much as in the Glorious Revolution, his relationship with the Doctor. It's great, well written stuff yet again, and a good twist at the end. This one won't impress you quite as much as the previous two, but it's still very enjoyable. Definitely worth a purchase if you like the sound of it. Second Chances is one of the best audios in the Companion Chronicles range, perhaps even one of the best Trown audios Big Finish have ever produced, or at least close to it. This one continues and concludes the arc that some of these audios have been building for Zoe, and it ends on quite a crescendo. In this one, Zoe has the opportunity to amend a mistake she made while travelling with the Doctor since it happened around the time period she lives in, and it makes for some really compelling stuff. The stakes are high and the atmosphere is intense. It gets epic in a way that few Companion Chronicles achieve, and it's all the better for it. Well, I don't want to get into it too much, so I don't give away any spoilers, it's simply a must-have. It gives you that adrenaline rush that only the best audios manage to give you, it's simply superb. I do recommend listening to the memory cheats before this, however, as it's good to have a little build-up. It's difficult to say whether I recommend the second Doctor box set volume 1, as it's not very consistent. It contains two fun but standard stories that I wouldn't lament about for a second, one absolutely awful story which transcends dullness itself, and one absolutely outstanding story which makes me feel like the purchase was worth it anyway. I think what I'll do is I'll give my thoughts on said story, and you can decide whether it's worth you buying it. The Edge again taps into the mind of Jamie, but in a much better way than any of the previous releases. It explores his insecurity despite his macho exterior, as the Doctor's and Zoe's intelligence makes him feel inferior, and when they arrive in this facility full of clever people, and the other two are interested in the science of it all, Jamie feels a bit like a third wheel. Over the course of the story, Jamie manages to prove himself, and to the others, that he is worth something, and even uses his lack of intelligence to his advantage. That concept, to me, as somebody who loves the character of Jamie, is a good emotional hook. Again, like Second Chances, this one really manages to get that adrenaline rush going. It's beautifully written and directed too. I could picture the world being painted extremely well in my mind. More than most stories out there, as a matter of fact. It's brilliant and makes the box set well worth it in my opinion, but I'll let you decide whether you actually want to go out and buy it yourself. Due to the sheer amount of concepts that got abandoned and replaced during the late Trouton era, there was plenty to go on for the Lost Stories range in terms of Trouton stories. I think I'll quickly cover my two favourites out of them. I do enjoy the Rose Mariners as well, but decided not to include it as it isn't quite at the same level as the other audios I've talked about, and isn't exactly that important either. What I do love about many stories in the Lost Stories range is how they have near full cast, yet still retain narration, which allows some really striking imagery. 
The Queen of Time, in particular, is an example of that which really allows the listener to picture the bizarre and zany world presented. This story is about Hecuba, who is often referred to as the Queen of Time and is a relative of the Celestial Toymaker, except the difference is she is far more insane and far more cruel. She manages to be frighteningly intimidating despite her sweet act. She plays with the Doctor, as the two spend most of the time together eating a banquet of unpleasant food, watching Jamie and Zoe go through various challenges and torments. It's great fun and really charmingly written. If you don't come away from it not having experienced a roller coaster of emotions and with a big grin, something has seriously went wrong. All thanks to the brilliant performances and the lovely adaption by Catherine Harvey, which really makes it feel so distinct. I hope to hear more of her writing in the future, as she did a really good job. I do recommend this one. I think it's fair to say that Lords of the Red Planet is the most well-known Trout and Big Finish release, as it probably should be, as a nice warrior origin story that came from the mind of their creator was always going to attract attention. Needless to say, it is superb. Big Finish never let you down with these really bizarre and creative worlds they make. It is fascinating to, to me to see something so alien portrayed to us in fiction so it already gets plus points for that. As for everything else, it's got sparkling dialogue, a great cast, and a wonderful characterization throughout. If I was to level one complaint, it's not that it's too long, but I just feel the expansive runtime could have been filled just a little better, but honestly, that's a nitpick. Another highly recommended one. The early adventures are definitely the biggest release in the Troughton range to date, finally giving his Doctor some almost full cast adventures. Just get Chris Thompson to play the second Doctor, please, big finish. So as such, I feel they all deserve a review here. Please note I haven't seen his second early adventures season, as it's still in the process of coming out, as of writing this video, so I won't be discussing it. If you'd like to see a full review of his new early adventure season once I've heard it, please tell me in the comments. The Yes Men is a disappointment in the extreme. It sounds like an interesting concept, the cover looks exciting, it's the first big Troughton release, and it's written by Simon Gurrier, no less, who is responsible for some of the best companion chronicles. However, it all completely falls flat. The script, like the city and the story, feels empty, unfinished even. There's all the groundwork here for a great story, but it just never really goes anywhere interesting or does anything notable. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad by any means, but you just won't come away from the audio really thinking about it. Quite frankly, it feels like it just wasted your time. This one isn't worth getting unless you really want to hear the whole of the second season of the early adventures, but there's no story arc or anything, so that's really not worth it. The Forsaken is a lovely little bit of Doctor Who. It takes place in quite a poignant historical setting as well, the fall of British Singapore to the Japanese in the Second World War, which really was not a pleasant place to be at the time. It taps into the fear going around at that time by having an alien that feeds on the fear and hopelessness of those left behind. Not the most original concept I know, but the way it's done here is really good. The swamps of Singapore provide a very good atmosphere, and quite honestly, it's pretty scary. I do recommend listening to this one in the dark. One criticism I should make that really frustrated me while listening to it is how they meet Ben's dad, who is in Singapore at the time, yet do absolutely nothing with it. You could have done so many things with his presence to help develop Ben as a character, but instead Justin Richards just forgets he's there for most of the story. That's a sorely wasted opportunity, not to mention sloppy writing in my opinion. If you want a good slice of Doctor Who horror with Pat Troughton as the Doctor, I'd definitely pick this one up. If it's not quite your cup of tea for whatever reason, it'd be no sin to pass this one. In the black hole, Guria more than makes up for his missteps in the Yes Men by delivering one of the most mind-explodingly fun scripts. I won't lie, this is quite a complex one, but it's all the better for it. In this story, we get a real treat, with Rufus Hound playing the monk, and he's absolutely delightful in the role. He captures the infantile hedonism in Peter Butterworth's original performance. I mean, if that alone doesn't make you want to buy the story, I don't know what will. It's great to see him and the Doctor play off each other and try to get the better of one another, but in such a complex way, with the sides being quite heavy in this one. If you're in any way a fan of Troughton's Doctor and slash or meeting the meddling monk, I'd definitely give this one a listen. At least if you think you're ready to get your mind bended. It doesn't get much duller than the ISOS network. I honestly didn't think that you could make the Doctor, Jamie and Zoe riding giant slugs boring, but I've been seriously proven wrong. The story isn't bad by any means, it just feels soulless. There's so many Big Finish Cybermen stories in a similar vein to this that it just feels so bland. I don't know what else to say for, because there's not really much to go on unfortunately. 
Again, don't be deceived by the exciting cover, I definitely pass this one. Well, there's my little overview and guide to the range of Trout and Big Finish over. Please comment any recommendations you have that weren't on this list for whatever reason, and say why. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you'll get enjoyment out of any of the aforementioned audios if you decide to buy them. Please tell me if you like this, as I'd consider doing this for other Doctors or any other kind of category you can think of in Big Finish once I've heard more of their respective ranges. That's it for now, and I'll see you all back next time in another video.